all that Colin and Taylor Fitzpatrick ever wanted to do was play football. Living alone with their grandmother in the sweltering Arizona desert, the twin brothers idolized their father, a legendary college quarterback who had won a Heisman Trophy and a national title at Iowa before his pro career was tragically cut short by a fatal car accident. Despite their lineage, no one thought that Colin and Taylor would have much of a chance of playing football beyond grade school. Colin stood at only 5'7 his senior year of high school, but was a speedy running back and definitely the more athletically gifted of the two brothers. Taylor was a left-handed quarterback who struggled to see over the line at 5'9", but was smart enough to make up for it. Together, the two boys single-handedly carried their tiny public school on a state semifinal run their senior year, but really flew under the radar in the recruiting world. Thankfully, due to his stellar academic performance, Taylor was able to earn a preferred walk-on offer from the brand new Space Force Academy, where he would have to fight his way onto the field as a 59 overall pocket passer. Colin had a little bit more luck than his brother, picking up some offers from small schools, including a scholarship offer from Northern Illinois, where the 70 overall scat back would have a chance to establish himself as a potential change of pace option his first couple of seasons. Since both schools are in the same conference, the brothers' teams would meet almost every season. Both brothers have a long road ahead to becoming college stars, and I'll be playing the entire first season of their journeys in this video. It's time for Taylor's first college practice, and he's gonna have to do a lot to get these coaches' attention. He's trying to work all the way up from the third string spot, and it is not going to be easy. Right now, he's just hoping to set himself up as the potential starter next season, and he hasn't made any big mistakes so far, but he's got to show that he can make some serious throws. And it is really not easy with these sliders. I'm just having to take these dump offs. Overall, a pretty good practice, but still a long ways to go with Coach Trust. And Taylor's going to have to watch his team lose to Wisconsin from the sidelines. But Colin, on the other hand, has the chance to earn some real playing time at Northern Illinois this season. And if he has a good practice today, he might get some looks in the season opener against Iowa. And he's been really solid in this practice, showing an effective burst of quickness, and even adding a stiff arm there on the end. Colin is most definitely the more athletically gifted brother, and he's turned a few heads with this practice for sure. He looks like he could be capable of challenging for a starting spot, and we'll see if he gets a few handoffs against Iowa. The coaches actually have him in at fullback right now. Definitely some interesting personnel choices given Colin's light frame, but it looks like he's going to get the chance to run a route here, and you know I'm calling for the ball all day. Sadly, that goes nowhere, as Iowa's thrashing this Husky team, and that's going to do it. Only one reception for three yards, as Iowa beat Northern Illinois badly, and Ontario Brown did look like a starter today. Not the first game Colin was looking for. He thought he'd get some carries with a big deficit like that. It seems like his coach is going to make him earn it with hard-fought reps in practice, and the starting job might be a little bit further away than it first appeared. Meanwhile, Taylor is just happy to be getting reps in practice, and he's quietly been doing a good job, making nice throws like look at that across the body throw to Hubble. Taylor might have a promising future, but his lack of mobility could be an issue. He's going to have to make crisp reads and throws like this one on the corner route to Kepler, but despite the good reps in practice, he doesn't have a chance of sniffing the field against FCS East today, except as a whole apparently coach has decided to give him this job. Taylor Fitzpatrick is going to be the best holder in the country by the end of the year. Look how hyped he is. And this game is actually going really well. Oh my god, man. Are we seeing the field here? I don't know what happened to the backup, but Taylor, of all things, is starting out with a read option. You see him shake off that tackle. I legitimately do not know how we are in the game right now, and I will gladly hand it off to unhook the trailer. It doesn't look like the coaches are going to let Taylor throw it around. That's okay. I guess they saw enough from him that they wanted to throw him a bone. He'll get the chance to run another read option on second and eight. And once again, he'll keep it running with that 60 speed and getting yanked down. One more handoff and that should do it for this one. Possibly the most thrilling 10 yards ever gained in college football. And it does appear that the coaches have promoted Taylor to the second string. I don't know why this happened, but I guess they saw something in our boy. Meanwhile, Colin is practicing in a monsoon before his game with Appalachian State here. And he's having a real nice practice, showing solid vision and a good ability to get into those holes. One thing that he hasn't really shown yet is big breakaway run ability. He always seems to get tackled before he can get quite past that second level. And the best way for him to earn playing time right now would probably be by showing he's an effective pass catcher. But that'll be an area of focus for him in the next few practices. And he's hardly seen the field at all against App State. As the Mountaineers have been smashing this Northern Illinois team. He actually ended up having less rush yards than his brother this week. In a surprising turn of events, Taylor's been the one who's been able to win over his coaching staff a little bit quicker. He just seems to be a good fit for the Space Force program, and unlike his brother, he's been dialing up some big plays in practice, hitting Hubble over top for the touchdown. The only thing is, all this coach trust could go away real quick if Taylor starts turning the ball over. You haven't seen that dreaded pick in practice that just axes your coach trust. And right when I say that, man, I click the wrong button, Taylor throws it right up into coverage, and that is a lot of progress cancelled out right there. That's something that can't happen again. It'll take a little bit to make up for that. And sadly today, Taylor is not seeing the field at all, because not a single extra pointer field.
field goal has been kicked. As Kansas State went to town on the Delta Dogs, Taylor has earned enough XP to boost his overall up to 60. Colin's still having a tougher time than expected. As with his size, he's getting thrown around by the bigger guys at practice. While that has caused him to develop some toughness, he's been breaking out of more tackles than I expected him to. He still definitely doesn't quite look like an ever down back just yet, but he's slowly working his way up. And on this stretch play, he actually has a ton of room. This might be the big play he's been waiting for. He's down the sidelines and gets pushed out at the five. So Colin's best practice so far for sure. And FCS is a perfect opportunity to get some action. He finally gets his first handoff and cuts it upfield for a nice little five yard game. It looks like Colin is going to get a chance to prove himself against a weaker opponent, but gets demolished by the safety there. Oh my God. Look at his legs just get completely crumpled. Interestingly enough, coach is giving Colin a lot of time right now. And there's a reception. He catches a pass in the flats for a big first down. I'm not sure, but I think the starting running back might actually be hurt. This could be a huge opportunity. Colin's already got a few carries under his belt. And he'll add another reception of that. This is exactly what we needed out of him. Unfortunately, Northern Illinois hasn't even been able to score. FCS Midwest has provided more of a challenge than expected. And bro, this is terrible timing. Colin goes down with an injury that is not good. I was worried that would end his playing time for the day, but he is right back in there. And coming off the bench, he's able to bounce to the outside. Might be his biggest play yet, but damn, he gets killed. Colin is going to get hurt plenty if he keeps taking hits like that. He's got to find a way to protect his small frame. And really, this has been a kind of underwhelming performance. He's averaging less than four yards per carry. It's not like this is exactly a world-beating defense either. Colin has certainly looked like a freshman, but that was a beautiful back juke. His best play of the day, but can't quite pick up that first. Thankfully, defense actually got a turnover because offense has really been pretty much useless today. And Colin will have to watch this big third and five from the sideline. Thankfully, his quarterback throws a strike for the first down. And he'll even come back in the game on the goal line. A shot to get his first touchdown here. He is desperately calling for the ball, but Lombardi runs it in himself. I think the starting running back is definitely hurt because Colin's getting all the carries right now. And we're going to have to find a way to crush this clock. Colin's able to get outside here though. And why are we not able to outrun these linebackers? Unfortunately, FCS Midwest gets the ball back and scores. This could potentially be a devastating upset in a season that's already sucked. And the pass game has been pretty much non-existent today. Which is going to continue to lean on the run game and some nice blocks to the outside. That'll be Colin's best run of the day. Now up over 50 yards. The stats are looking a little bit better. And oh, this is just beautifully blocked. Colin, get out of there, bro. We gotta turn those burners on and outrun those DBs, man. This is starting to become a nice drive. Gotta punch it in for the touchdown. And the blocking is just getting better and better. Wide open lanes for Colin with time taken towards two minutes. And offense is able to punch it in, but FCS answering right back with a field goal. This one could potentially be headed to overtime, but it looks like coach is going to get aggressive with 20 seconds left. Unfortunately, Lombardi takes a sack. Colin will get a chance to make something shake with this halfback screen. I actually like this call a lot. We just got to get some blockers and we might have something here. Colin getting near the first down marker. If we can pick this up, we might have a shot at a field goal. And Colin has some space out of the backfield, able to improvise for a little two yards. Probably going to have two plays to try to get into field goal range, but Lombardi takes an absolutely terrible sack. We'll have to call a timeout. Barring something truly crazy, this one is headed to overtime and Lombardi actually took a shot to Colin. Bro, if we could have caught up to that low key, that might have been a dime. So overtime, FCS kicked a field goal. So all NIU needs is a touchdown to win. Look at Colin fighting for extra yards. It would be a chance for a game winning touchdown for Colin. He gets stonewalled on second down, which isn't even giving him a route on third down. And that was just a terrible throw. But wait, we have a defensive pass interference. So the drive continues. A killer penalty for FCS. But Lombardi is going to get out of the pocket and fumble the ball. Are you kidding me, bro? We're going to lose this damn game. Allen's boys slide to 0-3 on the season, and it wasn't a terrible first game for him. He's still listed as number two on the depth chart, so Brown must have just had a game-ending injury. Definitely an interesting turn of events for Colin, as Taylor's still struggling along in practice. He continues to have pretty consistent flashes of potential with throws like this one to Hubble. For now, he'll just continue to be a faithful holder for the Delta Dogs, and how is that not rough in the kicker? The boys might actually be staging a comeback here against Vanderbilt, but unfortunately, the dogs run out of time. Another zero's day for Taylor. Meanwhile, Colin and the Huskies are taking on Purdue. Still looking for their first win, and Colin starts off by dropping a pass. So Colin spends almost no time on the field this week, and the Huskies somehow blow a six-point lead in the last minute. You gotta be kidding me. Can't say I'm sure how the Huskies went from kneel down to loss so quick. And practice has been incredibly frustrating, because for whatever reason, Colin's had almost no room to work, and it's been really hard to earn his coach's trust. At this point in this season, this Northern Illinois team is considered one of the worst in the country. Even lowly Kent State is providing a challenge, and Rocky Lombardi refuses to throw it to a wide open.
up in Colin there. The frustrations for Colin continue to mount after what seemed like a promising start to the season. He is getting a carry here though. We'll see if he can do something with this. He gets to the outside, cuts it back in, and this is one of his biggest runs yet, picking up 17. Gotta take those opportunities to come in and flash some potential, because for some reason, this team leans on the starting running back harder than anybody else in the country. Colin's finally getting another handoff on the counter though. Gotta follow the blockers to perfection here, and he breaks a tackle to get six. And on third and six, he might have a chance to get some action. Open out of the backfield, but of course Lombardi doesn't throw it to us. It's fourth and inches. And this game is a real defensive struggle. Six to nothing. This field goal with three minutes left should hopefully put the game away. And this time, the kneel should really end things. Huskies get their first dub of the season in shutout fashion. And Colin at least got a little bit of the action for one. So where Colin's at least getting a few carries a game, Taylor's still stuck just holding for kicks. And it looks like the brothers' teams are getting off to identical one and four starts. And I honestly think that both teams would have more wins if they gave our boys a shot. Taylor's been doing a good job in practice, but every once in a while he just makes a mistake that sets him back with his coaches. One interception is all it takes to erase literal weeks worth of progress. And that means that making really any kind of ballsy throw is a bad idea in these practices. Taylor just needs to take the easy reads and throw it away when nothing's there. But it has really just been more of a battle to earn trust than I expected. Really the easiest way to win trust would be to just get one series playing quarterback in a game. But I feel like this team's gonna have to get a little bit more desperate before Taylor's coach is willing to do that. At least it looks like the Delta Dogs are gonna get the win against Miami of Ohio. So a bowl game could still potentially be in play for the Delta Dogs. NIU on the other hand, I don't know. This team is really not coming together, but Colin getting off to a nice start with the catch out of the backfield. He continues to make these plays when he gets into games. He is starting to get some handoffs in this limited role here, and this time he breaks one loose. He might actually have a shot to go all the way, getting tripped up after a 30-yard game. Definitely the biggest play of Colin's career so far. The coach has given him the rock again. This might be a breakout game. And this really is a make-or-break game for this season. But of course, Rocky Lombardi throws a pick when Colin's calling for the ball wide open downfield. Maybe wide open's a bit of a stretch for what we were there. It's been really disappointing to go down 21-7 after a nice start. Thankfully, offense does finally get it cooking for a touchdown drive. I'm just surprised the Huskies are letting this Akron team score so many points against them. What the hell is that throw from Lombardi? This dude is actually trash. And of course, we lose coach trust for that bad throw somehow. This game is starting to look hopeless. And while Collins had a good game, the starter has over 100 yards. Gotta continue to take advantage of these limited opportunities. As sadly, we don't get the ball on the triple option there. Could have been a chance at a touchdown. Low key though, the boys might kind of be back in this game. Coach is gonna give him the rock again to try to go get this easy money. This defense is really paper mache, dude. But it does look like Colin is hurt on the play. Bad timing for that. Thankfully, he comes back in the game and the Huskies actually have a chance for a game-winning drive. I'm surprised Coach is choosing this time to put Colin on the field, but he'll try to make an impact. And this would be an absolutely crazy comeback. Lombardi keeping it there and picking up a massive first down. That was big. Now we're right on the edge of field goal range. Colin catching another pass out of the backfield for another first down. He has a team high four receptions on the day, but he's watching this play from the sideline. And of course, Rocky Lombardi takes a terrible sack. This dude is a bona fide scrub. I'm sorry, Rocky. He does make it up by getting the first down there. All right, so I think we're in field goal range. No timeouts and coach is still passing the ball. Another nice throw. Maybe I shouldn't have paid it. I hate that we're still passing. I'm just waiting for this man to turn the ball over. But instead, he'll get it to first and goal. Now we might be able to win the game. But this is a weird call on the goal line. I do not like it. And Lombardi is going to throw a pick. I knew it, bro. This guy is trash. This guy is actually trash. That is so frustrating. We had that totally bagged. But what an amazing pick by number three. Allen did have a pretty exciting game, which was good to see. And he's going to be able to get a nice little speed upgrade after that performance. If you look at that coach trust, though, we're still not really close to challenging for the starting job. Getting yards in practice has actually been harder than in games. And every time he gets tackled for a loss, even if he has no way to get out of it, he loses like 20 coach trust. There are a whole lot of plays where he gets tackled pretty much the second he gets the ball. So he's just going to have to keep showing out in the actual games. But in this game against Central Michigan, he's barely seen the field. Despite the Huskies getting out to an early lead, it was definitely the best the team has played all season. Checking out on the stats seven games in, Colin does have 164 yards, highest rushing average on the team, but no touchdowns. If you look here, though, the starter doesn't have any touchdowns either. He's only got one on the whole year. Collins also added almost 100 yards through the air. Whereas after spending another game just holding kicks and watching his team fall to two and five on the season, Taylor still hasn't seen the field as a passer and still just has those thrilling 10 yards rushing on the season. It's funny how these two teams' records have mirrored each other exactly and Collins having one of his best practices, getting a touchdown on the speed option here. That's as easy as it gets. Collins doesn't usually get a lot of space in practice, so he's got to take advantage of it when he does, and he has a 
a chance at another touchdown here on the screen. Getting all the way inside the five. That coach trust is finally starting to build up. One of the few practices where we didn't actually lose coach trust. And I'm hoping for a position battle for Colin by the end of the season. This Eastern Michigan game is getting off to a solid start for the Huskies. As Colin runs off tackle there, breaks a tackle, but fumbles the ball. Are you kidding me, man? It worked out, but we lose just a ton of coach trust. Thankfully, Colin's getting the ball again here. But it'll take a lot of yards to make up for that play. This is maybe the hardest I've battled to earn coach trust with any set of players. But Colin, apart from that fumble, is putting up nice stats so far today. And this is maybe the best half this offense has played. Sadly, it looks like this game still might be a loss. Eastern Michigan pulls it out. As Colin has 26 yards on the day. And now the Huskies will have to win out to make a bowl game. So here comes the big one. The two brothers are taking each other on in week 10. And that little title card says it all. So this will be interesting. I don't expect Taylor to see the field in this game. Looks like the Huskies are probably going to run away with this one. And Colin's finally got a route out of the backfield, picking up a nice little game. And Colin's team will get the better of this first matchup. As neither brother saw the field much, but we'll see if that changes next season. So kind of an anticlimactic meeting between the two brothers, but at least both of their teams are still in bowl contention. Colin and the Huskies still have something to play for, and he continues to try his best to make an impression during practice, getting a touchdown there. Colin has had his best practices in the rain with defenders slipping around everywhere. He gets to the edge here, has a shot to take it to the house, but just barely gets tripped up inside the five. The Huskies are going to have to win a snow game against 9-1 Ball State to stay in bowl contention. And Colin starts things out with a drop his first time on the field. I do not think the snow helped our boy out there. With two and a half minutes left, this one is looking pretty dire. Colin gets zero stats on the day, and that'll be it for the Huskies' bull hook. We'll see if the Delta Dogs can stay alive against Akron. And unfortunately, it doesn't look like that's going to happen either. It is funny how the brothers' two teams have paralleled with their records like this. So at this point, both of the boys are just getting ready to try to earn more playing time next season. And Colin actually manages to get his first touchdown on the ground. A big moment for him. Sadly does not get the ball for the rest of the game. And the Huskies take their eighth loss of the season with only 89 total yards. Toledo only had 42, bro. How did they even win? And in the season final, he actually might have a chance to get another one on the reception. This is a nice way to end the season for Colin, for sure. His teammates hyping him up in the end zone. And he'll get another carry on the next red zone possession, getting into the end zone for his third touchdown in three plays on the field. After having no touchdowns all season, this is crazy. Northern Illinois will get their fourth win to at least end the season off all right. As Colin only touched the ball three times, but got two touchdowns. Down. So Colin's final season stats, not bad at all for a freshman, almost 200 yards on the ground with two rushing touchdowns, as well as over 100 yards and a touchdown through the air. I do think maybe Taylor's going to be recognized for best field goal holder in the country this season. He's not held for a single miss. His team ends up finishing a slightly better 5-7 and seven on the season. The only stats he was able to collect on the year were those 10 rushing yards. Those beautiful 10 rushing yards. As somehow Nicholas Copernicus was the only person on this team who threw a pass. However, with both brothers establishing themselves as the clear number two option on the depth chart. They should both make a push for starting jobs next year. I'll see y'all then. Be sure to like and comment on the video. Peace.